Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Atia here at Booking It with Atia, and today, tonight, whatever time of day it is, it is for you. We are going to do my mid-month wrap-up. I may have done this a while ago, but I don't think I ever have done a mid-month wrap-up, but I've read 10 books. It is July 16th. I've read 10 books, and to not make my month wrap-up, super long we're just gonna do one halfway through so before we get into um the books i read finished enjoyed let's talk about some of the books i dnf'd so i was graciously you know given an e-arc of boyfriend material by alexis hall given i requested it i got it um, and I DNF'd it like 20% through. I was not vibing with the writing. The banter was weird. And I usually love a fake dating trope. So I was really excited for this. It takes place in Britain. It deals with like the whole idea of celebrity and, you know, a really outgoing boy and a guy who's just like really into himself. So it had all the makings to be great i just couldn't get past the first 20 percent of the book i just we didn't vibe so i dnf'd it i also dnf'd um what is it pink villa by olivia o'neill this book had no plot and i guess it wasn't meant to have a plot but the synopsis makes it seem like it's supposed to have a plot so that was a bit frustrating the main character was just like so weak and the men in the book treated her so poorly it was just it was a lot of nonsense that i was not with i also recently dnf'd one of my most anticipated reads of 2019 and that is kingdom of souls by rena baron i got 50 percent through and the only reason i got that far is because i was buddy reading with buddy reading this with someone and i had initiated the buddy read and i didn't want to call off the buddy read that i had initiated but it was not doing it i just man which sucks because i was really anticipating liking this I, that cover is stunning but i don't know i guess the writing is beautiful but i found that for a lot of things we got so much world building so much exposition and explanation and then like really crucial moments kind of just flew by like they happened so quickly and it's like you built up this world and you built up all this tension and why are you zooming past it for some reason i also found that we spent so much time with just the main character just her in her head and her trying to do things by herself that i wanted to know more about the side characters i wanted to know more about her parents i wanted to know more about her best friends and the love interest and there's a romance that's trying to happen in this book and it falls i mean again i got halfway through i got to pay like 200 and something and you i wanted to care about the romance and i couldn't because i did not know the love interest as well as i should have 200 pages in and it was just i don't know it would just felt really lackluster i was also super confused about the magic system i felt like that just was not explained well at all and again if i'm 50 percent of the way through a book i should not still be confused about the magic system confused about what's happening sure confused about you know what the villain is up to sure but not confused about the magic system. I should not be confused about basic world building things 50% of the way through a book. So, I mean, it was that along with some other things I had issues with. But I unfortunately DNF this book this month and I will be unhauling it and donating it to my local library once I take the tabs out. Alrighty, now on to the books that I finished. <laughs> I don't know what that accent was. That I don't want that side of the page. So I had one book that I rate two and a half stars and that's Blind Date with a Book Boyfriend. And of course on this piece of paper I did not write down the author's name. This is an ebook that I found super short and honestly it just felt short in a lot of ways. It's not particularly bad. I didn't find that it had you know anything offensive or anything just like super wrong with it. It just it was bleh. It was bleh bleh. And to be quite honest with you I do not remember the ending. I finished this a couple days ago and I cannot tell you what the ending was because I just it was not impactful I can tell you kind of what the epilogue was about 
but the ending of the actual book I, I just don't remember so what is this about this is about two characters don't even remember their names um the woman is in town for a job interview she's in a romance bookstore and the dude walks up to her and says hi or whatever blah blah blah. they strike up a conversation and this takes place in california our main lady is from new york and so the guy being a cali native is like oh i can take you to all these different places and blah 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 and it's their story and it's just it literally takes place in a day or two like i really cannot tell you what the resolution to the story is obviously they end up together but that's all i got for you next up we have some four star reads i read love and always by sophie jackson sophie jackson i guess you can consider her one of my favorite romance authors she wrote the pound of flesh series the pound of flesh series by sophie jackson has three main novels a pound of flesh an ounce of hope and a measure of love and it also has two novellas which follow the main characters of the the first book a pound of flesh so love and always is about cat and carter oh, i was like what is his name cat and carter they get engaged and it's very short like literally less than 70 pages them navigating that you know telling cat's mother about it all this other stuff it was really short really sweet hat yeah it was kind of sweet and you know it just had that nice that nice feeling you know and it felt so good to be back in that world i keep saying i need to reread a pound of flesh it's my favorite book in that series so i need to do that before the year is up next four star book that i read is la guardia this is actually a graphic novel by netty okorafor she has written a bunch of books but the most notable to me is the binti trilogy which i finished earlier in the year this follows and i love the names in this series this follows future and future is pregnant by citizen citizens her fiance and so she's pregnant but she's fleeing nigeria and she's coming to america with this alien plant life form and it's an interesting commentary on immigration because here this is sci-fi so it's futuristic here aliens are the immigrants and so you have some places like nigeria who are very accepting of these immigrants they're very um forthcoming and they as a culture embrace people coming to their country america however does not yeah so there's riots and there's protests and it's you know future coming to america coming back to america actually because she was born in america and then she moved to nigeria it's her coming back to america to save her plant friend and you find out why she leaves nigeria if it's so welcoming why she leaves nigeria um throughout the course of the graphic novel but it's just so i mean look at this artwork i love the artwork the storyline is fun just talking about it makes me want to reread it <laughs> next up we're going to move into some four and a half star books i had a really good beginning of the month honestly the bulk of the books that i read in the beginning of july have been four and a half stars i've just been having great luck in terms of picking up books that i'm loving and thoroughly enjoying so the first one i'm going to talk about is the ai who loved me by Alyssa cole Alyssa cole is one of my all-time favorite <laughs> ma'am one of my all-time favorite authors she writes romance specifically romance that centers black women this one is no different so we follow jordan who is recovering from an injury or recovering from this accident and she can't really remember what happened um so her job has actually put her on leave this is set in like a futuristic america where a lot of things where we are technologically advanced a lot of things are automated and so she goes to her next door neighbor one day to borrow a whisk i think and the next door neighbor's nephew Lee Wei, opens the door turns out Lee Wei is actually a biosynthetic humanoid being so he's an ai but he's not a robot but he's an ai so there's that yeah i mean it's a love story i will say the end takes such a turn like i was not expecting the ending it, it i don't want to say it comes out of nowhere there's so many different moments where she sets up what's going to happen at the end and what you find out about them at the end and it was just done so masterfully i loved it and i'm hoping 
and I'm pretty sure that this is a series so we're going to get more books in this world and I'm very very excited if that is the case. Next up we have A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. This one is really getting a lot of hype. It's people keep saying it's about black mermaids and it is and it isn't and i feel like a lot of people are going into this because that's how it's been it's being marketed a lot of people are going into this thinking that it is very high fantasy and it's not i would categorize this as urban fantasy it takes place in our modern times in our modern world in portland oregon and it has so many different social commentaries so many different aspects of our life i don't want to say it's fully about black mermaids because mermaids and sirens are different so you have tavia who's a siren not a mermaid she's a siren and she is dealing with her voice because being a siren is kind of like illegal in this not illegal but like people are scared of them so they target them um also in this world sirens are only black women so yeah you can kind of see the correlation there as well and then you have tavia's best friend effie who plays a mermaid at their local renaissance fair and I think that's where people are getting the like, this is about black mermaids. It's like, how do I say that it's not without spoiling it? But just if you're going to pick this book up, go into it knowing it's not high fantasy. It's not. I don't even think it looks like it's high fantasy, but it's not high fantasy. Just wanted to clear that up. I absolutely adore this book. It took me a little bit to get into. I read it over the course of like two or three weeks. There was something about the beginning and the pacing of the beginning that I we just weren't vibing and that could also be because I thought I was going into a book about black mermaids in a high fantasy world because that's how it's been marketed and it's not and I love the social commentary I love the character development of both of our characters and I really enjoy the twist at the end because it's not expected and it's just it's so interesting there's so many I'll probably need to reread this either before this year ends or early next year. Next up, we have another four and a half star, and that is The Serpent's Secret by Sayanti Dasgupta. This is a middle grade fantasy book. I listened to this on audio, which is actually narrated by the author, and it's incredible. I love the audiobook, highly recommend it. And this follows Hiramala, who is. A sixth grader it's her 12th birthday her entire life her parents have been like you're a princess you're a princess you're a princess and she's like okay mom and dad like i get it and so she comes home one day on her 12th birthday and her parents are gone and these two princes pop up and they're like hey we know how to get your parents back but you have to come with us to this like land that you you know you just need to come with us i love the writing i love the banter i love the journey that they go on there's so many different aspects to this book the friendship that grows between karen mala and neil is so adorable i loved it i'm very excited to read or continue on in this series i have the second book and i'm about to actually order the third book which just came out earlier this year but this looks like it could be a favorite series we'll see Another four and a half star book is A Girl Like Her by Talia Hibbert. I have been obsessed the past 15 days with Talia Hibbert and you'll find out why in about like a minute or so. But this is about Ruth and Evan. Yes, Evan and Ruth is not well liked in her town. It's a very uh, traditional town. The gossip mill is you know are running and Ruth is actually on the autism spectrum and from what I can gather in the book a lot of people don't know that about her and so because she doesn't interact the way people think she should they kind of judge her not kind of they do judge her and they're mean and they're nasty and they're just because she's not normal which is like the term they use in the book people isolate her and they target her i also got real racist vibes from this book not gonna lie um racist vibes not the, the characters or the author but just like her living in a town that because she's a black woman and she's not normal uh people target her and they're just like very mean honestly and evan is new in town and he doesn't care everybody's like you should stay away from her you should stay away from her and he's like no 
So it's their love story. Well, first they become friends. So it's their friends to lover story. And there's a lot of growth in Ruth, I will say. Not as much character growth in Evan, but I was kind of okay with that. There's so much growth in Ruth. And what I really enjoyed is it's not a she needed to change in order to fit in or find love she needed to grow within what's comfortable for her and i just really enjoyed it i actually bought the next two book next two books in this series and i'm very excited to get to them very soon now we're going to move into my five star reads earlier in the month i think it was actually the maybe the first book i finished of the month i read this is my america by kim johnson i read an archivist so thank you net galley this book actually comes out very very soon this follows tracy beaumont her father is actually on death row he was convicted for a murder a few years ago when she was younger he is coming up on his execution date she lives in texas i believe she lives in texas i think it's texas um, either Texas or Tennessee she lives in some state in the United States where the death penalty still exists and so her father has I think less than six months or less than nine months at the beginning of the book to live and she is trying desperately to get this uh, organization to take on his case and prove his innocence while that is happening her brother is accused of murdering a local white girl and it's an interesting look at the justice system it's an interesting look at the prison system and how both of those things they are directly related in how they impact black families but how they impact families with who has someone in prison which is an interesting take on the death penalty and all of the craziness i guess we can say that comes along with that i really enjoyed it it went by super quickly i will say i felt the and I'll be doing, I'll be writing a a fuller review on my blog closer to the release date. But I felt like some of the chapter endings were a little bit cheesy, but it read like a movie, honestly. It read so seamlessly, so quickly. And I guess they were cheesy, but they did the job because I would read the chapter ending and I would immediately want to go to the next chapter to find out what happened. Next five star read is Grumpy Jake by Melissa Blue. I read this as an ebook. This follows Bailey and I just forgot her last name Bailey something but she's a kindergarten teacher and she has a new student Jaden who is coming into her class beginning of the school year and his father Jake is known for being Jake the rake he goes through the women in the school like it's nothing never has a relationship that lasts more than six months and Bailey's like <laughs> when I'm gonna do this <laughs> it's not even going to happen don't even think about it and of course they start talking and they become friends and you can guess what happens next what i really enjoyed was jake's perspective and you know his growth and just being a father and the whole backstory behind him and his fatherhood was very interesting very unexpected it was a nice take on what you might initially think at the beginning of the book so it was very nice all right last book i'm going to talk about is Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. I loved this book. I flew through this book. I cannot get enough of this book. This is what started me on like a Talia Hibbert binge because I had already read Get a Life. Yeah, Get a Life, Chloe Brown. The end of last year, loved it. So I was like, I'm going to look out for this book when it comes out, order it. And now I'm just going to wait, make my way through Talia Hibbert's backlist. This book is so good. The character development for both characters is so well constructed. Uh, so we have Danny Brown, who doesn't think she's good in relationships. So she makes a rule. She's not going to get involved in a relationship. She's going to have casual buddies. Then we have Zafir, also known as Zaf. He works at the college that Danny works at. They've kind of developed this friendly co-worker banter a fire drill goes horribly wrong zaf ends up saving danny and everyone is recording and starts this rumor that they're dating and it helps build zafir's business his non-profit organization that he's running on the side so he approaches danny is like hey can we fake date because this is really helping my business and she's like hey sure and so that ensues they don't expect to fall in love but of course they do and it's them figuring out that relationship but it's also Danny figuring out how to overcome what she's taught herself 
about her worth and her ability to be in a relationship and it's about Zaf realizing and working through how to deal with his grief because he is dealing with his grief but not really dealing with it I'm sure we all know how that goes it's also talks a lot about dealing with emotions I love the fact that Zaf loves romance books proudly and unabashedly and it's great that's a trope that I'm just loving is men loving romance books and just overall appreciation of romance books especially in other romance books is so much fun i want to read this again very soon probably before the year is out because i loved it so so much it's also stunning all right that is it for my mid-month wrap-up thank you so much for watching this video make sure you give this video a huge thumbs up comment down below what have you read so far in the month of july that you're really really excited about make sure you are subscribed and that you have clicked the notification bell so you're notified every time i upload a new video follow me on all of my social media which is linked down below check out my blog my goodreads profile and i will see you in the next video bye I ain't living for the moment. I see what's mine and I want it. Hungry like a Pac Man. I'm Bruce Wayne and Batman. I'm Naruto with a Hanzo. Got a sharp mind like I'm Einstein. Put some copyright, so it's all mine. Check it for me, I'm in the sky.